In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Neoxa smart node. During this launch, the master nodes will earn 45% of the distribution. I've already set one up, payments are coming through, everything's looking good, so let's get started. This guide is going to be following the official steps from the Gitbug pages. I'll make sure I link that in the description below where you can copy and paste all the commands. There's a couple things that you're going to need. The first thing is going to be a Windows PC where you're going to be installing the core wallet, and then you're going to need a VPS service. You'll need a little over 1 million Neoxa to set up this node. The reason why I'm saying a little over that is because you're also going to have some transaction fees that you want to cover. Now, if you don't already have some Neoxa, what you can do is you can purchase it off of two different exchanges. I have these guides that you can follow to go ahead and buy it and then send it to your core wallet. The first thing that we're going to do is set up the core wallet. The reason why we're going to do this step first is because syncing with the blockchain can take up some time. To install the core wallet, we want to go over to the GitHub page for Neoxa and we're going to be taking a look at the latest release. At the time of recording, version 5.1.1.4 is the latest release out. We'll go ahead and click on that. They have several different versions over here. We're on a Windows PC, so we're going to scroll down a little bit, and we're going to be downloading the Neoxa Qt version right over here. Go ahead and click on that, and it's going to download the file. We'll click on it to open it, and here it is inside my downloads folder. I'm just going to drag it and put it on my desktop. Okay, and it's extracted it onto my desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize these files. And what I'll do next is double click on it to open it up. And if you get a Windows Protect message like this, you can click on the More Info button. This warning's coming up because it's an unknown publisher. We just have to click on Run Anyways. And then we'll get a welcome window like this. Now you can leave it in the default directory or you can select a custom directory. It's really up to you and where you wanna store it. In this example, I'm going to be leaving it as default. I'll go ahead and click on OK. The next step is to set up the wallet. So if you already have a wallet, you can go ahead and import your phrase or you can click on the generate button and it'll give you one to keep. So it'll generate a phrase for you. What you want to do is make sure you do not share this any with anybody. I'm not keeping this, so that's why I'm showing it to you. Write it down and keep it in a safe location. This is an important phrase because you'll be able to recover your wallet if anything were to go wrong. Once you have that, you can go ahead and click on the import button. We'll get a warning to encrypt the wallet. We'll make sure we do that in just a moment. We'll click on OK. And then we get a message from Windows Defender. We want to make sure that we allow access. So we'll click on that. To encrypt our wallet, we just have to go up to the settings menu at the top and then select encrypt wallet. And then you can go ahead and put in a passphrase. You repeat it and then you can click on OK. What you'll also want to do is make sure you have a backup of the wallet.dat file. To make that backup, you go up to the file menu up here at the top and then click on backup wallet. And what you can do is you can select a location on your PC to create a backup of this wallet data file and then save it. The wallet has now been backed up and saved. You can keep that in a secure location. You can also save this on a USB stick or store it somewhere safe. So what it's gonna do right now is it's going to sync with the blockchain. This might take several hours depending on your connection. What I'll do is I'm gonna let this sync up in the background and we'll jump over to the next step. The next thing that you need is a VPS service and this is the place that's gonna host your node. The requirements is gonna be two CPU cores, four gigs of RAM and 80 gigs of storage space. So these are the minimum requirements. Anything over that's gonna be great. I'm gonna give you some options. I'm not trying to sway you in any direction. I'm just gonna give you some choices over here. Racknerd is one of the places where I host a lot of my services. This is one option over here. And then you can see we also have DigitalOcean. We have a few different options of it over here. And then Catabo. And then this is actually a fairly cheaper solution uh, when you compare them all together. One other option that I'm gonna be covering in a completely separate video is Node Orbit. They have hosting for Neoxin nodes specifically at $4 a month. It's a very reliable service. I use this for my Flux nodes. I'll make sure I link all these options in the description below, but you can go ahead and make your choice. What we'll wanna do is log into it next. The VPS service I'm using is from Rackner, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in right now. So I'll click on accept, and I'm gonna type in my username, which is going to be root, and then I'm gonna be typing in my password. So this is a fresh install of Ubuntu. I'm gonna go ahead and start following the instructions to set up the VPS service. Okay, so the first step is to make sure that you're root or sudo. So we're gonna go ahead and enter that in. And what we're gonna do now is install unzip and fail to ban. So then I'll go ahead and enter this line in. I'll just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, so the installation is complete. I accepted all default changes just by hitting enter on my keyboard. When it asked me to restart services, I went ahead and did that. Now what we want to do is see if there's already a swap file. So now if you have done the testnet node, you probably already have a swap file. You can go ahead and enter in this command 
and it'll show you something. And if you do not have one, what you're gonna do is just run these commands and then hit enter. It'll automatically do that for you. So we're gonna go ahead and do the next step, which is secure the server and open up ports. That's what the next couple of lines will be. Go into nano. I'll go ahead and copy and paste the following lines. There we go. And then I'm going to write changes, which is control O. I'll hit enter to save that. And next I'm gonna exit by hitting control X. Okay, so with these changes made, it's a good idea to go ahead and reboot. So I'll go ahead and enter in the command for reboot and hit enter. And it's kicked me out, I'm gonna log right back in. Okay, I've just logged back in. So the next part is to add a system user. When I did this, I had a lot of problems. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is just skip this part and continue as root. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and make the Neoxa directory. We'll hit enter, and then we're gonna change directory. Now we're gonna go ahead and download the latest version. And we'll unzip it. Just going to change the permissions now. And we're gonna make a new directory, hit enter. Okay, and that takes care of it. The next step is gonna be in the wallet itself. You wanna make sure that you have Neoxa already sent, one million Neoxa that is sent to your wallet already. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to that. Okay, so here we are in our Neoxa core wallet. It is fully synced up with the blockchain. What we're gonna to wanna to do is generate a new receiving address. So we're gonna go in the receive section and we can just label it. I'm gonna call this one master node. And you don't have to put anything else in here. When you click on request payment, it's gonna generate an address, which is right over here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy the address and we'll close that. And then we're gonna go into the send section. We're sending ourselves 1 million Neoxa. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that address that I just copied. It automatically put in the same label, which is master node. And now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be entering in 1 million. Yeah, that looks like a million, okay. Uh, there we go, spaced it out. So I'm sending myself 1 million Neoxa. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the send button. And it's letting me know that there's fees. The fees are pretty minimal, but you wanna make sure you have enough for the fees. Then you say yes. It says the transaction has been sent. And now what we need to do is wait for one confirmation. So we're gonna go over here into the transaction section. Here's the transaction. We just have to wait for one confirmation to go through and we just received that one confirmation. That's great. What we wanna do is build our ProTX command within our wallet. Uh, this is the command that we're gonna be modifying the information in here, like the transaction ID. So now that we have one confirmation, I'm just gonna right click on this and I'm gonna say copy transaction ID. And over here, I'm just going to highlight this section and then I'm going to paste it. And now what we wanna do is go into the tool section up here at the top and then go to the debug console. In the space down here at the bottom, we're gonna type in smart, smart node outputs. And then we're gonna hit enter. And we wanna see if the transaction is a one or a zero. We have a one over here. So that's what we wanna put in our text file. So the output over here is going to be one. And now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting in my server IP address. The server IP is gonna be the server IP of your VPS service. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter mine in. And for the port, it's gonna be 8788. Okay, and now we need to get a fee address. So we're gonna go back over to the debug window. And inside here, we're gonna type in list address balances. So there we go. And in here, we have all the addresses that we have. We wanna make sure that we're not touching the one with the 1 million, uh, which we're using as collateral. It could be any of the other ones. So I'm just gonna pick the first one in the list, uh, which has a balance. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna go back over here. And inside the fee address, we're gonna go ahead and paste that in. Now that we have all the information we require for this command, we're just gonna highlight it all. And I'm gonna go back into my debug window and I'm gonna paste it in. That looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so now it just generated a config file and you can see there's a path right over here. So I'm just gonna highlight this section and I'm gonna open up my Windows Explorer. Okay, and inside my Windows Explorer at the top, I'm gonna paste in the path, hit enter, and you can see here is the config file. So I can go ahead and open this up. Open this up, I'm gonna use Notepad and we're gonna copy the contents in here because we're gonna be using this in our VPS server next. Okay, back at our VPS server, we're gonna just uh, paste in the next line. It, it opens up Nano, and now what we wanna do is paste the contents that we just copied from our console window. So I have it over here, and then I'm gonna write the changes. So it's gonna be Control-O to write it, I'm gonna hit Enter, and then I'm gonna Control-X to exit out. 
Okay, and we're back at the main window. Okay, and we're gonna run the next command, which is going to start our daemon. There we go, we have it running. And to see if it's running successfully, we're gonna run this last command. There we go. This process will take a few hours for it to run. That is the last step. We are completely done setting up our Neoxa smart note. I'll make sure I put a link for the Neoxa Discord in the description below. So if you're having any issues, they'll quickly diagnose the problem, get you up and running so you can start earning. And that's it for the video. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.